one of the things that has been brought up and is mentioned on this brochure, and I know that Mr. Peterson has mentioned it going door to door, and it's a reference to um, my testifying for the defense in the Tom Anderson trial, as though that's some kind of a you know, crime. Uh, first of all, uh, would you and Mr. Peterson believe in the fact that if the person got a subpoena, they should, uh, should live up to that subpoena? And if you knew we were going to get a subpoena, if you didn't volunteer to testify, why would you not volunteer? Now, I believe in the Constitution, I believe in the Bill of Rights, and I believe everybody has the right to a fair trial. And if you have information that could be useful, I think you have an obligation to bring that information forward. Tell me why you think that's so negative. Um, well, I mean, I was not aware. I don't believe you have said you were subpoenaed to testify. I think we're just saying, just setting the record straight. Uh, corruption has been the biggest bang, as we just, we just talked about, it affected the oil tax legislation. Um, the corruption has been one of the biggest issues across the state, but especially in Northeast Anchorage and Muldoon. Northeast Anchorage and Muldoon were deprived of their right to have an honest representative by Tom Anderson and by Brian Money. I don't think, I think that the voters should know that you were the one who co-chaired this campaign and helped get them elected. But they should know that you went and testified on this behalf of the trial. I mean, you made your choice. I don't think you should have to share my from I don't believe that anywhere I've hidden from that. I think it's perfectly clear. I did two television interviews and two uh, newspaper interviews to the back, so there's nothing hidden about it whatsoever. Let me just clarify from, from your, your question. Sometimes it's hard to tell which is the question, which is the answer. But were you subpoenaed to his no. trial? I was questioned by the FBI. After being questioned by the FBI, then I was questioned by the defense attorney. The defense attorney said, I may put you on the stand. Are you willing to serve? I said, I would prefer not to. Because at that time, I was campaigning for office. I said, it's going to be in my best interest to do so. And they said, well, then we may have to subpoena you. I said, well, if you're going to subpoena me anyway, I might as well show up. Because one way or the other, I'm going to have to be there. So did I volunteer? Relax on yourself. All right. So I've got a couple of questions after going over um, the statements you made about yourselves, you and Roxy. Um, you're a retired teacher. And uh, I think uh, having, I'm a child of two teachers. This is a pretty, um, it's a pretty amazing job. And I'm sorry that you weren't feeling really like a rock star because uh, teaching is just, it's such a, um, it can be such a gift my question is, in Alaska right now, we have some real issues when it comes to education. We have some of the lowest amount of, we've got the highest amount of dropouts uh, in the country and some of our areas. We've got a lot of issues going on. What have you taken to check out from your experience as a teacher, and obviously giving part of your life service to education? What have you done? What sort of uh, bills have you brought forward? And where do you think we've gone right? Because obviously this hasn't been address the property or fix or budget. Sure. I'm glad you asked that. Let me tell you what the problem is. We're not going to fix it in one year. We're not going to fix it in two years. We had eight years of flat funding for education. Flat funding. There was no increase in the base student allocation. There was no increase to the foundation formula. There was no increase to any of the teacher salaries in Anchorage. The salary schedule was exactly the same for eight years. Of those eight years, there were three years in which they were not even allowed to move down on the salary schedule for experience. So it was very, very punitive in terms of the fact that they didn't make advancement in the salary schedule. So what did I do? One of the things that I made a commitment to do was address adequate funding for education. That's why I served on the, as a vice chair of the Health, Education, and Social Services Committee. I served on the Budget Subcommittee for Education, Department of Education. I also served on the Budget Subcommittee for Health and Social Services. We put together the most comprehensive plan for financing the public education ever in the history of the state. We passed that with, with my help in, in each one of those committees. And we have to go into more detail. All right. Um, I actually, I, I, I do have a follow-up. I know that there were- Can I answer that? Yeah, I just want to clarify something that you have to say. Um, there, were, there was about $475,000 uh, vetoed uh, by Governor Bjorn for basically fighting the dropout rate. How did you, how did you feel about that? Um, and, and what do you think that we can do to really find that? Because obviously, I mean, AFN's being right now out there drop out rate. We've got a statewide. And, and we know that people that drop out of high school end up costing us more in, in the penal system than anywhere else. 
So what, what do you think should happen with her coming back as governor or not coming back as governor in the next session? There are a number of issues that were on the table as part of that whole discussion. One of the things that we were trying to put together was a, was a total comprehensive plan on how to approach education funding as well as modification to the education system. And part of that was addressing uh, the dropout rate, part of that was addressing homelessness, ESL, special education, and so on and so on and so on. And the list is long, deep, and wide. And so the amount of money that was vetoed there, I don't think was vetoed because somebody didn't think that that program was needed. They just didn't think that the approach was being taken with what was going to be the most effective. So what grade, I know you've given a lot of grades in the last teacher, what grade do you give this administration the last two years that you've been on? Like what grade do you give on how to deal with education? An A. All right, to you. Uh, well, I think that's a surprising answer. Uh, I think Rose was probably a surprise he didn't knock him down on our grade because uh, Representative Rose has disagreed with the governor when she wanted to add an extra $100 to pay student allocated because Representative Rose was voting against that. Uh, and that's one of the major disagreements with Pete and Bob uh, have on education. Is Pete believes our schools aren't actually funded even under the new uh, I know Representative Rose is a supplier that he claims he adequately funded schools. Pete disagrees. Pete was talking to me a few weeks ago about how his sister who teaches here in the district uh, called up and you know, asked him to save cereal box tops to get supplies for the classroom. Pete doesn't believe that we can call our schools adequately funded if our teachers have to, you know, get their family members and students' family members to collect box tops, box tops to fund our schools. That's just not right. Um, and you know, Pete's not going to make any deal in the closed caucus or anywhere that's going to compromise his ability to vote for funding our schools. All right. And uh, do you know where he plans on uh, how Pete's uh, thinking is? I don't know if you had this conversation, but we're looking at a very different financial structure coming back into the next session. I think the last two years really were quite different. Uh, now we're, you know, even since July, we've gone and a half of what uh, a barrel of oil is costing. How does uh, Pete see that we need to fund our schools better? Well, I mean, that's a good point. That, uh, I mean, Pete has been a businessman for the last 20 years. Uh, told me, you know, when he ran a restaurant, you know, every month, you know, he'd sit his employees down and he'd put up a whiteboard and put the budget down. So I've heard, you know, this is the money we have to work with this month. And so everyone was cognizant. He, he knows how to balance the books. But he also knows that education isn't just spending, as some people have said. Education is an investment. Um, by improving the funding for our schools, giving our students the education they need, they're going to, that's going to have people ready to get better paid jobs in the future. That's going to be more entrepreneurship and more innovation happening in the right here in Alaska. And Pete knows that we have to give a priority to education funding because that's an investment that's going to pay off. All right, and so in closing, um, give you an opportunity. Do I get a chance to rebut? Oh, sure. I'm sorry, I thought you were, I thought you were both rebutting me. Go <laughs> ahead. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, I want to address, because he keeps bringing it up, I voted against the extra $100 that the governor asked for on the base student allocation. He's absolutely right. Not only did I vote against it, I stood up on the floor and debated against it. 